Chromebook Plus was introduced in 2023 as a more powerful budget laptop, and this year, Google and its partners have doubled down on making Chromebook Plus even more alluring and indispensable, announcing at a news conference it now offers the addition of baked-in artificial intelligence. The new HP Chromebook Plus X360 is among those more powerful laptops with built-in AI. In this review, I was able to secure a loaner through Google, so I'm going to try it out at home and see what it's like to use. I'll show you some of the special features it has, both being an HP model and what some of the newly created Google Chromebook artificial intelligence features it has are like. I'll wrap things up with the pros and the cons, and I'll let you know if I think this might be a good Chromebook for you. Let's start with what you're getting. I'll go over the basics of this laptop first, then dive into some of the AI specific features that you'll get and how they work, as well as how you might use them. Two primary factors driving the appeal of Chromebooks are their prices and simplicity of Chrome OS, which is the operating system. The HP Chromebook Plus X360 is a two-in-one laptop with a 360 degree hinge, so you can fold the keyboard over and use this as a tablet as well. It will also sit in an inverted V, making it an ideal movie viewing tablet for a business traveler. Chromebooks in general don't usually boast a lot of speed or memory, so they're best for people like students, writers, or light internet users, and those who don't need a powerful computer for things like video editing, gaming, and high-powered tasks. One weak spot of the spec sheet here on this model is the nominal 128 gigabytes of storage space that this Chromebook comes with. Because the operating system and other user data use about 30 gigabytes of space, that leaves you with less than 100 gigs for apps and offline Google Drive storage. Now, while I don't expect most Chromebook users would immediately fill up that space, many cheaper laptops do offer more. To make matters less than ideal, this Chromebook uses something called UFS storage, which means some users might find it slower than NVMe storage, which is more commonly found on modern laptops. The HP Chromebook Plus X360 has a widescreen 14-inch touchscreen display with full HD or 1080p resolution. That's not the sharpest knife or screen in the drawer, but it gets the job done fine. For watching videos, it's okay, but you may get annoyed by the display's aspect ratio when you try to fold the keyboard deck back and use it in portrait or tablet orientation. There's a reason why you don't see many dedicated tablets with this kind of 16 to 9 aspect ratio. While I think this configuration probably looks good on paper, in practice, converting this to a tablet is really not a great user experience. The taller than tall size and double thick width means it's hard to hold and majorly awkward to use as a tablet, plus it's heavy as all get out and I got really tired of holding it after just a short time. My other issue with the display is its brightness. Having a max brightness of just 250 nits isn't a good look. Using the laptop indoors is probably okay with some ambient lighting, but you'll likely struggle using it outside on sunny days. The chiclet style keyboard on the Chromebook Plus X360 is decent. The mouse pad, which HP insists on referring to as the HP image pad, hmm, is pleasantly large and supports multi-touch gestures. The HP Chromebook Plus X360 supports fast charging with about 45 minutes giving you about 50% power. The best part is it only requires the included 45 watt USB-C power adapter, which means almost any power banks you have with a 45 watt or greater USB-C port should charge your Chromebook just fine in a pinch. HP officially estimates around 10 hours of battery life, so you can expect around eight hours depending on your usage and any extensions you've installed. The Chromebook here has a port, a USB-C port on each side, with the right side also featuring a 3.5mm headphone jack and a full-size USB port. The top bezel of the screen houses HP's True Vision 1080p camera with a physical camera shutter, which I really appreciate. The dual-array digital microphones also help with video conferencing. Let's get to the really special features, like everything you can do with AI. I was invited to Google headquarters in New York to get the news about the latest built-in AI features firsthand. At the event, Google announced that Gemini, the company's AI engine, will now be baked into all Chromebook Plus laptops. Gemini will be able to help with idea generation, organizing your day, and can even help you write content or read and summarize materials you find on the web. Generative imaging will now also be available on Chromebook Plus laptops. You can use generative imaging to do two things. The first is customized 
text wallpapers and the other is to allow you to use Google AI to create custom video calling backgrounds. The idea is when you log into a video conferencing solution, whichever one you use, you should be able to use a professional looking but personalized background. And because this is now baked into the operating system of this computer, it means you can use it on any platform on your Chromebook Plus, not just Google Meet, but on Teams or even Zoom too. Creating your own backgrounds or images is actually super quick and easy. You can just click on the Gemini button in the taskbar and request whatever style of photo or image you're looking for. The more direction you give it and the more specific you are, the more likely you're going to be happy with the end result, like my mid-century office background. Google execs also shared another new feature, which will use AI to help you write on a Chromebook Plus called Help Me Write. It can prompt you whether you're starting from scratch or even if you've got copy to work with, it can make improvements too. One of the unique things about this feature is that it doesn't happen in a separate app or separate window. It happens where you're already working. I tried it out while writing this review and found Gemini was actually able to write me some decent human sounding copy. Having AI baked in means you no longer need to highlight text, right click, copy, and then send it off to a sidebar app, edit things, do whatever you're gonna do, and then bring it back. Google Chromebook Plus AI assistance with its writing is designed to work with all kinds of platforms and apps, including things like documents and web pages directly. There's kind of a flip side to this feature as well with something called Help Me Read. Help Me Read is going to allow you to load up a web page, for example, and then have Google's AI assistant summarize it for you. Help Me Read was demoed for me at Google headquarters at the press conference, but it's not available until later in 2024, so I wasn't able to test it out on my loaner Chromebook Plus. After the news conference, I was let loose with some of Google's team to see these tools and a few others firsthand, like Magic Editor for Photos, which has previously only been available on Pixel phones. Magic Editor lets you fix, tweak, and enhance photos in all kinds of ways, and I got to explore this in more detail during my review at home, and I have to say I love the experience of Magic Editor for editing photos on a much larger screen. It's easy to do and seems reasonably quick, and the edits are pretty amazing. An important point to all of this AI goodness is that it does not come without a cost. These new features are available on a host of newer Chromebook Plus laptops and tablets as part of a package that's called Google One AI Premium. For now, the plan is going to be free for 12 months if you buy a new Chromebook Plus. The plan also includes access to Gemini Advanced, two terabytes of data storage, and the use of Gemini in Docs, Sheets, Slides, Gmail, and more. After that, it's going to run about $19.99 a month US or $26.99 Canadian, which is not insignificant, but at least the 12 months free will really give you a solid chance to try it out, maximize it, and determine if it's going to be worth it for you. Overall, while the HP Chromebook Plus X360 isn't the most expensive 2-in-1 convertible Chromebook, its price does feel a bit high for some of the weaknesses I'm finding with it. In fact, some of you out there may be thinking, yeah, I can spend a little more on a Windows laptop that features double the RAM with more storage space, a faster processor, and a nicer display, and you wouldn't be wrong. These little details matter a lot because you can't upgrade this laptop. The specs may serve you well today, but what about next year or three years from now? This has always been an issue for a lot of folks when it comes to Chromebooks. And even if my list of cons aren't deal breakers for you, I feel like you're probably going to wish this HP Chromebook had a better or brighter display or a thinner body for tablet use at some point in the future. The strengths of the HP Chromebook Plus X360 360 are enough to please a very small crowd, but for some folks, I either recommend spending a bit less on a non-touch Chromebook or more on a Windows 2-in-1 with a better display and nicer form factor. Let's go over the pros and the cons of this one. On the pro side, having a two-in-one convertible laptop and tablet combination might sound handy for the right person. This Chromebook Plus is quite light and thin as a laptop and it travels well and you can spread it open for watching videos conveniently. Having Google's new set of AI features baked into this Chromebook Plus is also a huge selling feature and probably this laptop's biggest selling point, if I'm being honest. And the fact you get 12 months of AI services for free is an another good way to test it out and see if it's right for you. The AI
AI features themselves are pretty impressive, and I can see myself leaning into each of them quite a bit. I love how seamless all of the new tools are, and I don't constantly need to swap between apps or websites to use the AI features. With that said, I'm really going to have to pay close attention to how much I'm using these features over the next year to see if the $20 to $26 monthly fee is truly going to be worth it after the honeymoon period's over. I'm going to move into a section here of this review that I now call the meh features. There are really neither pros nor cons, but just things that seem kind of average. The screen is just fine with its HD resolution, the backlit keyboard is cool, and the privacy shutter on the camera is handy, the battery life is average for a Chromebook, and the charging time is fine. On the cons table, the storage speed and future growth adaptability of this laptop seem kind of subpar, particularly when compared to competitors. I also feel like the awkward widescreen or tall screen tablet layout and the bulkiness of folding back the keyboard is going to have people who were hoping for a tablet wishing they owned a true tablet instead. I feel like HP is trying to use the folding tablet configuration as a way to justify the higher than average price of this Chromebook. That runs about $599 US or $899 Canadian. For folks who are looking for a cheaper tablet option, I'd be more inclined to point them in the direction of something like the Asus Chromebook CM301 DM2, which I'm still reviewing. In short, if you are still considering this Chromebook, I would highly recommend going to a store to really try it out and get a feel for it. If you like the design and don't mind the bulk, it might be worth considering for you. If you're just looking for an inexpensive laptop for school, traveling for work, or something for the kids, there are any number of cheaper options that come close to matching the specs on this one. For that reason, I would advise you to take a pass on the Chromebook X360 unless you have a specific use case for it. You can check out my other Chromebook experiences or learn more about Google's foray into on-device AI right now.